Hi, this is Jordan. This month's XDA Developer TV is brought to you by the Samsung Smart App Challenge 2012. Enter for your chance to win your piece of over $4 million in cash prizes by clicking the banner at the top of xdadevelopers.com or by visiting developer.samsung.com. <laughs> Friday, August 3rd, 2012, and let's talk about what happened this week over at xdadevelopers.com. First and foremost, let's get the Jelly Bean ports out of the way. The GSM-based HTC Evo 3D, the Sony Xperia Play, and the LG Optimus GT540 all got ports of Jelly Bean this week. Looking through the threads, some of them were AOSP, some of them were CM10, and the one thing that really stands out here is the Optimus itself, because it is such a low-spec device. It's really surprising to see Jelly Bean running on it. It's got a 600 megahertz processor, about 150 megs of RAM, and about 140 megs of usable user space, so to see something like Jelly Bean running on it is just amazing. As well, some other Sony Xperia devices got ports of Jelly Bean via CM10. These were the Ray, the Pro, the Neo, the Neo V, the Arc, the Arc S, and the S. And that's an awful lot. However, you would expect that to be a bunch of different developers because that is so many different devices, but it appears it was just one guy. All the last ones I mentioned there were done by XDA-recognized developer FXP, so that's, you know, huge thumbs up there. Sorry I didn't mention the names of all the ones before, but it, it just lots and lots of people. This one in particular really stands out, though, because that's an awful lot of work to do. That's enough jelly bean for now, though. Now, the one thing that's really big this week, and, and big for a little while, I suppose, is the Olympics. I mean, my wife is sitting there in the next room watching the Olympics as we speak. Of course, we're watching on NBC Fail, and it's six hours behind, so I could scream out a result, and she would be very upset with me. Anyway, like I said, we are six hours behind here in terms of our NBC coverage. If you're not happy with that, there is a way to work around it. You can try to use the fail that is the Android app for NBC's Olympics app. You can try to use their web-based application, but it's kind of terrible too. Well, no more. XDA senior member Charlie Bigpot has gone ahead and uploaded his copy of the APK for the BBC official Olympics app. Now, if you're outside of the UK, you only get a very minimal amount of things like the, the scores, the tables, the, the different meddling stuff. You don't get the live streaming, you don't get the replay videos. However, if you know how to use proxies and you know how to set up a proxy on your device, you can probably work that out. All the information for this is available in the thread, so definitely head on over to the thread that will be linked to down in the video description and take a look. This next item was something I found kind of interesting. I saw a couple of stories about it and was very happy to see it show up on the XDA portal. As you are probably well aware, Android is Linux, essentially. It's Linux kernel plus a bunch of stuff on top of it that makes it Android. Well, as such, Linux is intended to be a multi-user operating system. That's why you're able to root. You're able to take your traditional user account and escalate the privileges to the privilege of root, a different user. Well, with the later versions of Android, especially with Jelly Bean, they're adding in extra bits of code into Android to actually make it a multi-user compatible system. Like I said, the code does already exist in Android, and thanks very much to XDA-recognized themer Xanderman112, it's now usable. He's written up a tutorial on how to set up a multi-user system for your Android device. Well, maybe not any Android device. You do have to be running Jelly Bean. So I'm actually kind of tempted to do it on my Galaxy Nexus just to see how it would work out. However, the majority of my Android devices are for me. My wife has her own and, you know, we just keep things separate. I think that's how a lot of people do. But more and more often you're seeing these tablets that are just a coffee table tablet or a work tablet or uh, a personal tablet you want to take to work and use with a different profile entirely for work so you can have all of your proxy settings set up for work you can have your wireless configurations and everything so I could see that definitely having some excellent use cases so one way or another if you want to know more about this or if you're on a jelly bean ROM and you want to go ahead and give it a try head on over to the thread and give it a little read and to wrap things up, let's talk about a little bit of XDA TV news. If you haven't seen it already, two videos have been put out this week by our newest XDA TV producer, TK. He's going to be doing some app reviews for us, and the first one he reviewed was SmartStay EX, which is a clone of the Samsung SmartStay app. He also reviewed the Triangle Away app from XDA Elite recognized developer Chainfire, who we talk about almost every single week. And finally, if you have not seen it already, our buddy Adam Outler released a video this week unboxing the XDA Way, the newest version of the Android development kit, thanks to Will Verdusco for sending it to him. Definitely looks like an interesting device, although I'm not entirely sure how useful that would be for somebody like me, but I would definitely love to get hands on it and just see what I could do with it. One way or another, I do look forward to seeing what Adam does with it. Hopefully, maybe he'll do some fun tutorials on it in the future. But that is all that I've got for you today. As always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below if you like this content. Hit subscribe up above if you want to be notified when we put out new content. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on Monday.